The ultrasonic sensor is one of the most valuable sensors for FLL and WRO robots, and now it's back for the Mindstorms Robot Inventor. Today, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to make the most of this essential sensor. What is up everyone? It's Kyle here again, and I'm so excited to be back to share yet another Mindstorms tutorial with you guys. And today we're talking about the distance sensor that comes with the Robot Inventor. And today's video is all about teaching you how to get the very most out of this sensor. If you're here watching this channel today, you probably love technology just as much as I do. So you're probably wondering just a little bit about how this sensor actually works. Now in today's video, you're going to be hearing me using the words distance sensor and ultrasonic sensor interchangeably. LEGO officially calls this a distance sensor, but the reason why I call it an ultrasonic sensor is because that's an accurate description of what it actually is. Ultrasonic refers to sound that is so high pitched that the human ear cannot hear it at all. So it is above the frequency range that people can hear. And the way this sensor works is very similar to a bat's echolocation or even a dolphin's echolocation. So this sensor emits very high frequency sound that we can't hear. It waits for the sound to reflect off of an object and come back to the sensor. And by measuring how long it takes for the sound to come back to the sensor after it's first emitted, the sensor is able to estimate how much distance is between itself and the object off of which the sound bounced. And this is how this sensor is able to see in the dark when there's no light at all. Pretty cool, right? If you're familiar with the EB3 or the NXT ultrasonic sensors at all, this distance sensor works on the same exact principle that makes those older ultrasonic sensors work. The more you know. Here's a great first activity that you can do to get up and running with your ultrasonic sensor for the first time and get a feel for how it works. So connect the ultrasonic sensor to one of the ports on your intelligent hub, any port will be just fine. Then turn on your intelligent hub and connect it to your smart device. If you have any trouble connecting it, you can check out this video up here. That's a quick start guide I made to help you troubleshoot any connection issues or to get that set up for the first time. Once that's all squared away, click in the top right corner of the tablet app where you see the brick icon with a little green dot and that will bring up port view and this shows you the sensor and motor readouts on every connected piece of hardware. Hopefully you should see the ultrasonic sensor in one of the ports, whichever port you plugged it into. This is a great opportunity to start learning the sensor and getting a hang for how you can measure things with the sensor. Now if you click on the sensor's icon in the port view screen, it gives you a drop down menu with three different options and these are three slightly different operating modes. They all measure distance pretty much the same exact way. The only difference is it reports it in different units. So the first option, the default of course, is centimeters and the maximum detection range is 200 centimeters. However, if you prefer bald eagle units, you can also select inches and the maximum detection range there is 79 inches, which is just the equivalent distance in imperial units. The third option is percent, which gives you a percentage value between zero to 100%. Now one last important thing to note when you're using this sensor is the ultrasonic sensor is best at measuring distance when the surface of the sensor is parallel to whatever surface you're measuring. What I mean by this is remember what I said earlier about how this sensor measures distance by emitting a beam of inaudible sound. Well, that beam has to reflect back into the sensor in order to measure distance properly. And if you're trying to measure a distance on a weird angle, the sound won't reflect back to the sensor properly and you might not get a good distance measurement. Now I wanna go ahead and share with you a few sample programs that will help you use the ultrasonic sensor in the context of a real piece of code. The very first one I'm going to show is a simple example where you can use the ultrasonic sensor to trigger events. So let's say your robot is doing one thing and you want the robot to watch out for the ultrasonic sensor to detect a certain condition, then interrupt that and then move on to doing a different thing. So we'll say when the program starts, we want the robot to just start out driving in a straight line. So we'll say set movement speed to 50% and start moving in a straight line. This is just fine for the default values. And we'll say if the robot's ultrasonic sensor detects a distance of less than six centimeters, we just want the robot to stop immediately, change the color on its brick light and play a sound. So what you'll do for that is go into the events tab and then use the ultrasonic sensor here. So when the ultrasonic sensor detects 
a distance that is you can choose closer than farther than or exactly at i recommend not using exactly at just because it's a little bit too precise and your robot might miss a measurement so we'll say closer than six centimeters so we can type in six and then change the unit to centimeters and make sure the port matches the correct port where you have it plugged in and then what we can do is we'll tell the robot to stop moving here in the movement block we'll tell it to change the center button light to red i guess is fine for the default again you have a whole bunch of options here and we will have it play a sound so let's see what this looks like in action This next example is going to show you how to use the ultrasonic sensor with a conditional. So these are the classic if else statements. So you give it some kind of condition or a statement. If that condition is true, then it executes the code under the if statement. If the statement is false, then it executes the code under the else statement. And so in this example, let's say the robot is by default driving straight, but if the robot sees some object that's closer than 15 centimeters, then it's going to make a turn to avoid that. This is a classic case for a conditional. Looking on the screen, I already have a little bit of code set up for getting the robot to make a sharp turn and a little bit of code set up for making the robot drive straight. So now we need to fill in the rest of the conditional statement. So go over to control. We're going to want to pull out this, which is an if else statement. And if the condition is true, like I said, we want to make the turn. And otherwise, in every other scenario, so whenever that condition is false, we'll just have the robot drive straight. And now we need to fill in what's actually the condition for this statement. So what you can do is you can go into sensors and drag out the hexagon shaped block. So that is the condition block for the ultrasonic sensor. And it looks something like this. So we'll say if the ultrasonic sensor in port F sees something closer than 15 centimeters, and again, you can adjust the distance and the unit, and you also have options closer than farther than exactly at. We're gonna keep this to closer than for this example. So if the ultrasonic sensor sees something closer than 15 centimeters away, it's going to trigger the first statement here, which is this, which is making a turn. Otherwise, in every other scenario, the robot's just going to happily drive forward, going straight in whatever direction it's already traveling. And that's the conditional all set up. And then the one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in an infinite loop, which allows us to keep testing the robot over and over again, and then just drag the whole conditional in there. So now that this is all set up, let's see what this looks like in action. This last example I'm going to show you is a little bit more advanced. Let's say you want to read the numerical value directly from the sensor and use that to control some part of your robot. So in this case, let's say we have a motor on our robot and we want to use the ultrasonic sensor to directly control its speed. So what we'll do is we'll set the speed of that motor to whatever distance the ultrasonic sensor is currently reading because these are all numerical values. So from the sensor tab, we can pull out this block which is a little bit oval shaped and this is what gets the robot to directly read whatever numerical value is on its sensor so just make a mental note that that's what the oval blocks do so we'll say the ultrasonic sensor in port f we want to read its distance in some unit since we're controlling the motor's power which is a percentage from 0 to 100 it actually makes sense to use the ultrasonic sensor percentage unit in this case so i'll just leave it on the default wherever i drop this blue block here it will insert the current value of the ultrasonic sensor's distance reading into the expression so next let's go into the motors tab and we will say set the speed of motor c so our motor in port C to some percentage of power. But instead of just typing in a number, we will drag in this little ultrasonic sensor block. So that's saying whatever percentage distance the ultrasonic sensor is reading, set the motor power to that number. And the next thing we want to do is of course, tell that motor to start running. So make sure these two ports match. So if you chose motor C before, choose motor C again. And this gets the motor to start running at that power. And we're just gonna add a short time wait onto the end of that for one quarter of a second. So 0 0.25 seconds. And we're going to lastly throw this entire block of code that we made into an infinite loop. So go into control, repeat forever, and then just add everything into there. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the robot.
Are you planning to use the ultrasonic sensor in one of your own Mindstorms projects? If you are, drop a comment below and let me know about it. I always love hearing about your guys' projects. Thank you so much for spending some time to learn about this awesome sensor with me this week. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.